As I mentioned before, there are several ways of solving systems of linear equations. And the one I'm going to present first is not the one we're going to focus on which, uh, in this course, which, which uh, uh, makes use of the matrix representation. So we're going to first do the method that you probably already know from, from uh, high school or even middle school. And it's just a reminder. So the idea is uh, to, to, to uh, isolate one variable in one equation in terms of the others, plug it into the other equations, and so on. I want to just do an example. That's the way I'm going to um, uh, present this method, just by an example. And I'm going to work on this system that we had in the previous clip as an example. So this is the system. Ignore the matrix, multi uh, the matrix form of it for a minute. We want to solve this. So how do we solve it? So we choose one of the equations, maybe the one that's easiest to, to tackle, which kind of looks like number two here, right? Because it only has three of the unknowns. Isolate one variable, one of the unknowns, in terms of the others. There's, of course, a lot of flexibility here. You can choose to start with whatever equation you want and plug into whatever ones you want and isolate whatever unknowns you want. So I'm doing it one way. Anybody can do it any other way as long as you do it correctly. So I'm going to start from equation number two. So, um, and isolate x3. So do you agree that I can write that x3 equals 8 minus 2x1 plus x2. So this follows from equation number two. Do you agree? And now I'm going to take x3 and plug it in to the other two equations. Okay? What I'm going to be left with is two equations with only three unknowns. Because x3 is no longer going to appear. It's going to be replaced by this thing. Okay? So I'm plugging in x3 here and here. And I'm going to have two system sorry, a, a system of two equations with three unknowns. I have to move to a separate board, so verify that I'm writing it correctly. So what I get, so it follows that, I get x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3, but x3 is now replaced by 8 plus x2 minus 2x1 plus 4x4 equals 13. And the other equation, originally the third one, 3x1 minus 2x2 plus x3, 8 plus x2 minus 2x1 plus 2x4 equals 13. Do you agree? Okay. So I reduced the system by one equation and one unknown. Okay. If I started with 170 equations and 75,000 uh, 75, unknowns, it's going to take a while, of course. Usually a computer does it and not just good old us. But um, this is the idea. Okay. okay, so now let's, before we iterate this idea, before we do it again, let's simplify. Okay. So this is going to be simplified. I'm just collecting like terms. So I have x1 minus 2x1. So I have minus x1, 2x2. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. It's x1 minus 6x1, right? Because there's that, that 3 there. So it's minus 5x1. 2x2 plus 3x2 is plus 5x2. There's no x3. It's gone. That's the whole idea. And then I have plus 4x4 equals 13. And the other one, I have 3. Where? Oh, you're right. I forgot it. Thanks. So plus 3 times 8, which is 24, I'm going to move it here with a negative sign. 13 minus 24, I'm going to get negative 11. Thanks. Now the other equation, so I have 3x1 minus 2x1, x1, minus 2x2 plus x2, minus x2, plus 2x4 equals, and then there's the 13 minus 8. 5. Good? And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to choose one, uh, one of these. I'm going to take the second one and isolate x2. So from the second one, I have x2 equals x1 plus 2x4 minus 5. 
and I'm going to plug this into the first one. So I get minus 5x1 plus 5 times x2, x1 plus 2x4 minus 5, plus 4x4 equals minus 11. Good? Again, I'm going to collect like terms. So I have minus 5x1 plus 5x1. So this happens to die out here. Then I have 10x4 here plus 4x4 there. So 14x4. And then I have minus 25 here. Move it there equals 14. Good? That's the result I get here. It's just a coincidence that in this case the x1's canceled out, okay, just in this example. So from this I can conclude that x4 has to be 1. Do you agree? So in order to satisfy this, x4 has to be 1. And then I start moving back to the... To the, to the other variables that I had isolated in the previous steps. So if x4 is 1, what can I say about x2? So let's, let's maybe trace it back in blue instead of writing on a million different boards. So x4 is 1, therefore from this it follows, it follows that x2 has to be x1 plus 2 minus 5. So it's x1 plus 2x4, but x4 is 1, so plus 2 minus 5, minus 3. Do you agree? Okay. And then I can trace, now that I know x2, and note that there's no restriction so far on x1. Okay. This just expresses x2 in terms of x1. Now I trace back to x3, that's going to be in this board, so you're going to have to move a board here, and x3 is what? Is 8 minus 2x1 plus x2. But x2 was x1 minus 3. So 8 minus 3 is going to be 5, and then minus 2x1 plus x1 is minus x1. Do you agree? And this exhausts all the information that I have. So what I know here, what I know here, is that x4 is fixed, it has to be 1. x2 and x3 can be expressed in terms of x1, and x1 is what call, what's called a degree of freedom. I can take any x1 that I want, that would automatically fix x2 and x3. Okay? So this is the terminology that, that I want to introduce now. So here's the terminology. x1... Uh, uh, is called a, a degree of freedom, okay, or represents a degree of freedom. In this case, there's only one. Okay, only one variable can be taken to be any arbitrary number. Okay, so that's x1. A general solution, solution, is of the form, remember a solution, I'm going to still write it as a, as a vector or an array of four entries, x1, x2, x3, and x4. x4 has to be 1, right? x1 is our degree of freedom, it can be arbitrary, so I'm just going to leave it as x. But then it fixes the other two. So x2 is going to be x minus 3, and x3 is going to be 5 minus x. Do you agree? Okay. So any solution to this equation, to the, sorry, to this system of equations, is going to be of this form, where x can be anything you want. Okay. As long as all the entries are consistent with that. We could have guessed that there's going to be a degree of freedom here because there were four unknowns and only three equations. So this is, this is not a, a precise statement. We're going to make precise statements of this sort a bit later. But all this is saying that the three equations were putting 
uh, three restrictions on the on the uh, on the on the variables. Okay, but there were four variables with only three restrictions, so one of them should be we should have the ability to choose. Do, do you intuitively understand this statement? Okay, it's not yet um, precise. Okay, so if if the number of constraints you have, the number of equations is less than the number of variables, a good guess would be that you're going to have some degrees of freedom. Okay. Okay. So this is a general solution. We know what a degree of freedom is. All, all for this example only. Okay. We're not writing it more. Um, um, so if we choose, for example, so for example, taking x equals 2, we get, what do we get? We get 2 minus 1, 3, 1, and this is called, this is a, this is a particular solution or a specific solution. Oh boy. Solution. Okay? Do you agree? And I recommend, I'm not going to do it here, but I recommend try taking these four numbers and separately verifying that they indeed uh, satisfy all three equations. That it's indeed a solution to that system. Okay? Good. How many solutions does this system have? Infinitely many, right? Because once you have a degree of freedom, x can be any real number. There are a lot of those. So each real number would yield a new solution. Okay? So in this example, we have infinitely many solutions. Do you agree? Okay? Now that's not always, that's not always the case. So let's remark that. So In the previous example, we had infinitely many solutions. But that's not always the case. There could be um, only one solution here's an example look at the system so now I'm not trying to to show you the method because the idea of the method uh, I hope you already picked up and I assume you've you've even known it before so I'm gonna take a very simple example just to, to exhibit the uh, situation where there's only one solution so for example x minus y equals 3 and 2x plus y equals 9. So let's solve it. From the first one I know that y equals x minus 3. I plug it into the second one, so I get 2x plus x minus 3 equals 9. Therefore, 3x equals 6, and x equals 2. And that's it. x has to be equal to 2. And then y equals 1, right? Because y is x minus 3. Do you agree? What did I do? You're right. 3 plus, you're right. 3x equals 12. x equals uh, 4. And y equals 4. y is still 1. Hmm. Do you agree? Okay, so here there's a single solution. This is a situation of a system of equations. In this case, two equations with two unknowns with a single solution. Okay. And there could be, there could be no solutions. So here's another example. 
look at the system x minus y equals 3 and x minus y equals 4. This is a very trivial um, system. Sometimes a uh, system with no solutions could be disguised. Okay, so looking at it naively, it doesn't look like exactly a situation where, you know, you have two contradicting equations where there's obviously no solution. X minus Y cannot be simultaneous 3 and 4, right? Often it's going to be, uh, it's going to take some work to, to recognize that that's, that's the situation you're in, okay? So, um, one might ask, could there be a system of equations that has uh, exactly seven solutions, right? So we know that there could be infinitely many, there could be only one, and there could be no solutions. Those are the three, um, the three examples that we encountered. Could there be precisely seven? Uh, the answer is no, but we're going to have to argue that. Okay? So th these are the only three possibilities for a system of linear equations. Okay, either none, or precisely one, or infinitely many. Okay, so there's a big gap between one and infinity. Okay, so the other method for solving systems of equations is the method that actually uh, uses the, the, the representation of the system in terms of matrices, and it's called Gauss's method, and that we're going to uh, discuss in the next lesson.